Hi. Hi, everyone. Oh, so nice to see you. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, we, you might be wondering why I'm not here with Ken, but today I have a special guest. My special guest is Emily. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I invited her because it seems that we've been going through very similar things and it just feels like a like a sister that's this that's been holding my hand mm. through these changes and yeah it's it's all started changing and my relationship with Ken feels like it's transforming that's why he's not right now with me so we're going through a transformation of and going into these new different missions and so yeah that's why I'm here today and yeah I just wanted to share with you what's been going on with these few weeks for me and, and the changes and the new adventures and the things that were left behind and I was I heard I think you heard that I was on a trip to my hometown in Guatemala and I was in my cousin's wedding and that trip came in a very interesting moment. I was, we were working a lot with Ken on our relationship and, and this trip was there and it just felt like a little weird that we, I wasn't even have this trip when I was stepping into leadership in one of our centers here. And, but yeah, I, I I remember the day before I was joining with Ricky and she's like, yeah, it feels like a little weird that you're leaving right now, but I trust like if this is the plan. And it certainly was the plan. And yeah, that trip was very meaningful to me because I was there just to love and to extend the joy and I was so, so happy. It's like the, the trip that I went home and it was absolutely beautiful with my family and my friends. And I just got into my strength somehow. Like there were all these symbols and all these miracles coming my way. And even in the airport, there was a nun that sat next to me and she was just talking to me about different things and then she asked me, what's your name? And I said, Anna, really? She's like, my name is Anna too. And she said, my name is Anna Faith. And then she said, my last name is really interesting, it's constant. And I was like, wow, that was so beautiful. She was like, Anna of the constant faith. And I feel like those were like the symbols that were helping me get in touch with a deeper calling that I have. Like I was, it's like somehow in their relationship, I was lost somehow in the purpose. I got lost. And yeah, she was just a beautiful symbol of my devotion and the prayer of my heart and it was like she was helping me get in touch with my calling somehow. But it might look, I might not look exactly the way that it does for her, but it was so helpful. And then on the plane, I was, I opened the course book like, okay, what, what is it that you want me to see, that you want to tell me? And it was lesson 98. I accept my part in God's plans for salvation. Yeah, and I, I didn't even know what I was saying yes to. I just feel like I, I said that lesson with all my heart. Like, yes, I'm, I'm yours. I'm yours and like even that line, my life is not my own and 
I'm just here, use me. Whatever way you want to use me, I'm, I'm here, that's all I want to do. And, and yeah, and it just seemed like right when I came back, it was like everything changed because I came back and there we were all in a prayer of what was going to happen with the relationship with Ken and I and stepping into leadership together and these different things. And then in the prayer, it became so obvious that he was being called on a mission and I was being called on a different mission and that the best way that could happen was that he would be in his strength in, in this new role of following and I would be in my strength more in leading. So, yeah, that, that wasn't, I remember at the beginning it was a little like harsh, like, I don't know if I can do this and I don't know if, if, yeah, if I can do this, that was the thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I could, with that, it was, we had a beautiful meeting with Lisa and Jason. You were there, Emily. Mm -hmm. And I was just heartbroken when I went into that meeting. And yeah, there was a lot of pain coming up for me and yeah, of the relationship like stopping to being the way that it was somehow. And but I, I remember what Lisa said, like, you just need to be in your devotion to God. And yeah, I went through very, <laughs> Like the, in that moment, I was like, yes, this feels so beautiful. And I was ready for this mission. I'm going to be in leadership in this center and leading Spanish team and different things. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then after that, all this grief came and all this sadness and loss and it was, it was very deep. You know, you were like holding me. Yeah, I think it was just so beautiful to see like how, <clears throat> how it was all orchestrated by the spirit because you had been experiencing a lot of darkness coming up and moving into this new phase of coming to La Casa and overseeing the center and the Spanish ministry. You could feel in your mind there was something really big coming in, but it was this this intense darkness that was coming up for you and for Ken. And, um, and then this trip seemed to come in for you to go back and visit your family. And you were mm -hmm. even saying it was unlike any other trip you've ever had home. <laughs> it was like previous times when you'd gone home, it felt more like you were facing more thoughts in your mind. But this time it was just like this love trip. And you know, from what you shared with me about that trip, it was like, actually reconnecting with your desire for God. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what a lot of that darkness was beforehand, like you were saying at the beginning of the show, just you had disconnected in some way for your purpose, like what you had come here for. And mm -hmm. it was this relationship with God. And the Spirit gives these, you know, seeming interpersonal relationships, mm -hmm. or they're not really interpersonal relationships, but the, the purpose of them is to strengthen that relationship with mm -hmm. God. They're not relationships in and of themselves. But, you know, so much healing happens and it does feel like you are actually in relationship <laughs> with a person. And, and when we get to these points where there's a wall that can't be penetrated and, and no matter what, what we seem to be doing or what shifts in form, I feel like the spirit just wants release for us to have release in our mind and wants us to be happy. So things will be reorchestrated, but not ever because anything has gone wrong, but because what's truly gonna serve your awakening. And it, it, that's where relationships, we take them out of this personal realm. Like there's a much deeper, a much bigger purpose for them. And so when just looking back in the last few weeks for you, 
I can just see how the spirit has just orchestrated it all so beautifully because in those few days when you actually got to step out, it's like you got to step out of those thoughts for a few days because you needed a break in your mind. And you felt all of this love and you met the nun, Anna, of mm. constant faith. <laughs> and you, you were saying that lesson, you were reading it over and over and over on the plane, like reconnecting with that desire for God. And, mm. and the other beautiful thing you told me was when you left your house, you forgot your journal. Mm, yeah. And so you stopped in a store on the way to the airport and you picked up two new journals and you had the thought, wow, this is a new chapter. Mm -hmm. Like something new is happening. And when you told me that, I could just really feel like all that's happening is that the deep prayer in your heart is being answered, mm -hmm. nothing else. Like it can feel when a relationship seems to fall away, like they never really go anywhere, but when they seem to fall away, it's like it can be very disorientating mm. because who we think we are actually is, yeah, it feels like it's, we're, it's being dismantled, mm. like some kind of concept of who we think we are. And it's like, it's so disorientating, but I feel like you've been such a demonstration mm. over the last week or two because I feel that that's a choice point. When we come to those crossroads, that's a choice point. And the ego wants us to think that we're losing something, like something is being taken away. But that's never what's happening. Mm. All that's happening is that something new is coming in and space needs to be made, from, made for that. Mm. And obviously the healing comes up, like whatever the feelings, abandonment or loss, and they have to come up to be released, but that's not really what's going on. That's just a purification. So space can be made for what's new. And yeah, you've been so beautiful because you had those few days of just that, you totally faced it in your mind, that intensity. <laughs> and then something popped and you just said yes to everything. It was like, you, I think you have more <laughs> function, more leadership than you've ever had in your life. And yeah. you're just saying yes. You're saying yes to the relationships, yes to the expansion. And in that, your mind is being lifted every day more and more mm. and you're getting happier and happier. And I just see that as a demonstration of your strength, mm. like your true self, who you really are is coming forth. And all of this had to happen just for you to be able to get in touch with it. And it was mm. the prayer of your heart. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everything has been orchestrated, as you say, because we even had that love day. We had a love day with everyone in the community that's here in Mexico. And I remember I just walked in and I was absolutely dead, like gone, <laughs> like a zombie. And through, we were just playing songs and in a meditation and then this song came up, The Greatest Love by Whitney Houston and <coughs> Ricky was holding me and she was, yeah, just being so beautiful, like gentle with me and I was just crying and it just felt like at that point yeah, in that song, she's talking about the greatest love of all I found inside of me. And I think that in that point, the greatest love was much more exciting for me than to keep on holding on to the pain mm. that was unbearable. Mm. And I think that's what happened. <laughs> I'm not really sure how it happened. That was like the... Yeah, so beautiful, like the music has played such an important, important part for me mm -hmm. during this. Yeah, I was even listening to another song by Bethel Music. That's, I'm over my, in over my head or something like that, but the lyrics there are really beautiful. She's saying, further and further I move out of the shore far away from the shore and I'm like into the unknown but whatever it looks like whatever it takes I'm yours mm. and that's when I I was in that this unknown feeling completely <laughs> you keep saying to me everything's unknown at the moment like yeah. every 
everything that you do in your day is unknown. There's nothing yeah. from the past. And like, isn't that amazing? You know, it's like this fresh blank canvas. And it's like, you need to pray and join in every moment because there's no past reference. Mm. And the other thing I was just remembering was, you were telling me last night that when you went, when you went home, it was for a family member's wedding. Mm -hmm. And during the ceremony, you just got in touch with this deeper commitment. And it was in your mind like a commitment to Ken. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you were coming back and you were like, I, I really want to use this relationship. Like ultimately the commitment was to God. I feel mm -hmm. like that's what you were getting in touch with. But symbolically it was Ken. It's like whatever, whatever you stepped out of in your mind and just got in touch with all that love, you're like, yeah, I'm just, I, I want to accept the means. I'm going to give myself fully. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for this. And then you came back and within <laughs> a day, everything had transformed. <laughs> And you were on a mission and Ken was on a mission and yeah. it was going to be a collaboration, all of these things that you're doing. But now actually you fully stepped in. So it's even bigger than you thought. But when you were telling me that, it was so beautiful because I actually feel that that prayer was answered. Mm. And it's only when we come in and think that we know what the form is supposed to look like that it can ever seem that something's gone wrong. But your relationship with Ken is eternal. And I know you've said, you know, for both of you, your hearts have opened up to each other more since this reconfiguration has happened. Mm -hmm. And you're still collaborate, collaborating on these Spanish retreats and, and all of that. But if the relationship was only ever to strengthen your relationship with God and to deepen that, by you making that commitment in that ceremony in your mind to Ken, actually it's being answered, like you are going deeper together, your relationship with him is deepening, but the form is just shifting. And I think that that's where we need to expand our, our concept of even what relationships mm. is, because it's so limited in a worldly <laughs> sense, beginnings and endings, when, it's, when it ends, it's over. And heartbreak. Yeah, Horrible. like the person's gone, yeah. they're lost or whatever, mm. but actually I think, you know, in, in our community, we experience over and over again that every time a relationship shifts, there's a deepening and the love mm. deepens until we come into that experience that it was never really about the person, mm. but they were the means that were given. So I just thought that was so beautiful when you were sharing, because mm. the way you were sharing was like, oh, I thought it was going to be this, and then next, the next day it all <laughs> went the other direction, but I don't, I don't actually see it as separate. I feel like that's the only way you could have gone deeper with Ken. Yeah. The other way, it was stagnant. There was, there was no deepening in the relationship, and now there is. And you don't know what the spirit has in store, or how it's going to look. But yeah, it's the unknown, and that's that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And even, yeah, like all my other past relationships have been, like, as you say, in the world, like it's over, gone, and all this different things and when I was going through all that pain you said this is for you to see that there is no loss and I was holding that in my heart and yeah it was like I saw him again and it was like oh my god I, I can I could never ever stop loving you mm. like I don't have to try even I can just love you as I love you and as I loved you and mm -hmm. it just feels like it's deeper now. It's like the only thing that's been taken away is the pain, mm -hmm. like the pain and the limits, but yeah, the love is supposed to remain. That was always what was true. Yeah. And, and what, like what configuration is going to support that? Really, that's the only question. That's mm -hmm. all we want, but it's like in that section from the Course beyond, I think it's beyond all idols, like when you decide on the form, you lose the understanding of like the meaning. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and how has it been for you the last week or so in La Casa, like with all of these new functions? Oh, wow, it's been really full. <laughs> but I've been really happy too, really happy. 
It's like I tapped into this happiness that I haven't tapped in in a long time. And I remember one morning I said, Emily, I feel very peaceful. She was like, this is great. <laughs> Enjoy it. And, <laughs> and in the evening you said, Emily, I still feel peaceful. It's still here. <laughs> yeah. <beautiful>. yeah. <laughs> the, during the relationship, it was very intense. So it's like, it would be just a few hours and I was feeling great. And then other things were coming up for different things. And... But yeah, even that day, I had a whole peaceful day. That was amazing. And then two days where I was completely happy. And I remember I even have a, a, had a meeting with Ken. I was so happy to see him, so, so happy to see him. And it was, for me, it was like I was just a little girl playing with my friend that's always been this beautiful friend that I've mm -hmm. had. And, yeah, it just feels very sweet. Mm. <laughs> and now even Andy's at La Casa. It's like he felt this, he felt impelled to come to Mexico. Mm. And there's like a beautiful collaboration there as well. And I think for both of you, even seeing that, like that's a primary relationship now, like it's a different form than the relationship with Ken, but you guys need to be linked in mind. And if you're not, nothing's really stable at mm. La Casa at all. So. Oh, God, I'm so grateful that I have Andy with me right now. He's so beautiful. And yeah, as soon as he came in, I felt the strength underneath me. Like, yeah, there was like a day where the changes were happening, but he was coming at night. During that day, it was very dark and mm -hmm. weird. And But as soon as he stepped into the door, I just... I just felt like some kind of relief, mm -hmm. like I'm so grateful, like so, so grateful. Yeah, support that I never thought would be there. Mm -hmm. It's all showing up, all showing up. And it's like I'm so excited about this new mission because I have to be in so much prayer and so tuned in to be so precise. And when we were talking about it, you were saying, Anna, you need to be so precise in the things that you are to do each day so that you are like being guided through everything so that you can <laughs> mm -hmm. be happy and not be into stress or doer or... Yeah. yeah, it's like when we start to get a lot of function, the way I see it is it's that it's that deeper call to prayer because if you do one thing that you weren't supposed to do for 10 minutes, <laughs> you start to feel that pressure in the mind because there's actually no space. Mm. Jesus wants to use you so fully in every moment that you need to know what he wants you to be doing mm. or else it just starts to get really disorientating. So it's a real speed up in the mind when we have we given all of these functions and leadership roles. It's like truly you have to pay so much attention to how you feel like is this really what I'm supposed to be doing in the moment because mm. it's like there's the the margin for error is like being decreased <laughs> which is good and I feel happy about that yeah so happy it's like I'm so excited it's like yes I want to be doing what you will for me like mm. what you're guiding me to do and overall like getting like in this closer relationship with the spirit is what I want mm. is really what I want and then all the means are there for me to practice yeah so I just feel so grateful for that <laughs> yeah and all the all the supports given as well like if a, there's a reconfiguration and something seems to fall away whatever is needed the spirit will bring in will bring in the people the resources the mind support whatever it is and I think you're experiencing that yeah. you know you've moved into the library bedroom now and you have the library and you're saying to me the other day it feels like a house it's so big in here but, but you need that you need the library so you can start joining one-on-one -on -one with you know the residents at La Casa so like whatever we're given is only so to, to support our function mm -hmm. it's not because of preferences or because we personally want something you know it can seem to match up sometimes mm -hmm. okay I've got this beautiful room but underneath it is it what is it for it's to serve the whole. It's so Jesus can use me. It's so that I can be in my strength. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, then there's no guilt beautiful. with any of it. No. 
Mm -hmm. I was moving in. It's like, wow, this is new. <laughs> yeah, very new. It all feels new. That really felt like I came from one trip to another trip, like to this new dimension. And it's like even thinking about the past, it just feels like a distant dream somehow. Mm. It was like something changed completely. I came from that trip so lifted up, so lifted up and so happy. And it was like, it gave me that strength to be able to move into this new chapter. Mm. And that's it. When you're so fully in the present moment, and you are at the moment because you've, you've got all of this function and Jesus is just using you, then the past is a distant memory. The only way the past can be strong and real in our mind is if we're living there in our mind. Mm. But when you're, when you're being used in the present moment by Jesus, there really is nothing else. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. The present moment, I was reading a quote today. It's There's a gift waiting for me in the present. And that feels so beautiful. Like that's when I'll be open to hear the Spirit and yeah. be in that connection. Yeah. And it even feels beautiful that back at home I printed this picture of Jesus and brought it with me. And it's right beside me on my bed. So it's like the very first thing I do when I wake up is I see Him. It's like okay, you are with me, I know you are with me, and mm. at night is the same, and during the day, he's there, and I don't know, it just feels like this relationship is like really deepening somehow. Yeah, mm. That's just a beautiful demonstration of how it's never about the form or even what we're doing, like overseeing a center or organizing a retreat. It's all just given to deepen that relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus. And if it's not being used for that, it feels empty. Yeah. And that's when the doer comes in. Mm -hmm. It's like we have to keep coming back to what is it for? Yeah. What is it for? And if we're not feeling that deepening, if we're not feeling that expansion, it's like to come back to prayer mm -hmm. because why else would we do anything? Yeah. That was, that was really important for me, getting really in touch. What's the desire of my heart? Before I even, I even was getting into my projects or whatever, like, why am I doing this? If it's only about the things I seem to have to do, it will be very empty, just like any other job. Like, if the purpose is not there strongly, it's just lost again. So it's like I've been getting in touch, I even was reading more about devotion and reverence and I just really want to remember and when I remember that it's about being connected with Jesus in this mm. it's like oh yeah it's not about what I have to do at all I don't think I don't think I can do what I'm being put in to do <laughs> or even if I think I know that's not the case. I didn't came here for that. Mm. You actually said to me, was it the other day, before I came to community, I was like really competent in everything. Like everything <laughs> I tried, I got all of this re these reflections of, oh wow, art, you're so great at art or <laughs> whatever it was. And then, you said, and then I came to community and it, that was, it was very different. <laughs> but then you see that it's not about are you good or bad at things in the world. It was never about that. It's now you have a prayer mm. to heal that you're doing anything. So you can't get those reflections and witnesses of, oh, good job, Anna, mm -hmm. well done because it's not going to it's not going to deepen that relationship mm, so. exactly that's so beautiful yeah i'm so grateful that you were here on my show emily yeah i'm grateful too yeah thank you so grateful you're here with me <laughs> mm. <laughs> thank you yeah, i love you anna i love you too mm. <laughs> thank you so much everyone for being here it was mm. lovely, lovely to see you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.